and we are going to study and at the end we are just switching on and off the machine but now we know that what are all the internal components and what are the different ways to uh, do that analyze that so here first we are going to see the types of washing machine previously olden days initial we are started with the manual mode then we started with semi automatic then fully automatic what do you mean with manual mode all the operation should be done by the users only everything we have to start with selecting water inlet and then what are all the operation next one wash then rinse then we have to spin all the operation done manually only next one we are going to see the semi automatic so first the user will be programming that washing machine and then later the machine take care so microcontroller or microprocessor will be performing the job the next one we are going to see the fully automatic no human intervention in this so all this washing machine we are have going to see fully automatic because already we are using this only familiar with it so olden days we used manual mode but uh, mostly the fully automatic machine will not be that much flexible because when any repair occurs we have to throw that machine and we have to buy a new one as it is costly to repair that so time spent cost uh, will be more rather than buying a new machine this is the schematic of a washing machine so we can see the in look of this washing machine we are having a water inlet valves where we are going to uh, in the water will be flow through drain hose where the water drain out and then we are having a control panel where we are having uh, the all the switches whatever we are going to operate will be there in the control panel and we monitor through the LED display so the lids are used for op opening and closing the machine drums are used for agitation so we can either agitate uh, forward or backward or whatever methodology we can here we are having limited actually the lid is used for moving that agitated motor is an actuator so sensors will be sensing agitator will be the actuator which is doing the action depending upon the sensor so the motor rotates either forward or backward or the front and back movement so next one are uh, reverse or forward next one we are having the leveling feed which will be the bush so water pump which will be pumping out the water outside So the different components of the washing machine are the main thing is brain of the machine is the system controller. So we are having a driving motor, water pump, display panel, sensor, and inverter unit. So the washing machine actually uh, how it is going to operate? We are going to see the internal. So these are the components used in the washing machine. The working of these components are we are having a display panel where the user will be just simply. That only everyone will be familiar with that. As we are using this day to day life, uh, daily we are just uh, pressing the button and just the water washing machine washes. So we are having a different sensors to fill the soaps, waters, as well as uh, water temperatures, everything, doors, swap, selector knobs, buttons, every spin velocity, temperature, insert size. These are all the sensors which will be sensing the temperature, the heat level, water level, etc. So again, we are having a water level sensor, which will be uh, whenever the water level goes low in a particular level, then it will be giving a beep sound. Or whenever the water level is exceeding a particular level, it will give the beep sound. There is a door sensor. So while you are doing a spin, you might have experienced that uh, while you are doing a spin, you will get a sound that alarm beep sound that it is open, door is open. When you are closing the door only, the spins. it will be spinning operation to perform so next one that drain uh, drain is nothing but spinning operation after that we can use that so the water level sensor senses the water level door sensor senses whether the door is open or closed so driving motor which is the actual thing which is doing the washing so either it will be doing in opposite direction or it will be doing a front word direction so there are uh, in a semi automatic there will be a two motors one for washing and one for spinning and fully automatic will be having a single motor sequence of the cleansing of the clothes what is the actual operation performed most of you know this anyway i will repeat one second place on your clothes onto the clean tub for washing and then position the detergent cleansing cleaning soap and put on the tap so water rushes inside the tap 
So next, electronic digital control, then by press of the different programming sectors, whether we have to select a, whether it is a tough cloth or it is a mild cloth, whatever it is, the dirt, depending upon the dirt, we determine it. Okay? Then here, uh, the motor engine rotates and then the clothes will be washed. There will be a big sound at the end when we completed the washing. Now your clothes are clean, remove it from the clean tub and wear it in the spin tub and the program it appropriately after content spinning clothes are dry and you are permitted to hang it for proper drying natural light. What are the inputs to the washing machine and what are the outputs you are going to see now? So the user push buttons is the input. Water temperature is a temperature sensor which will be taking the temperature of the water and it will be given as the input to the microcontroller. Next one, drum speed. The speed of the drum, depending upon your uh, dirt density, the speed of the drum varies. Next one, water level sensors. The water level sensors determine whether it is uh, beyond the low level or it is above a particular level. Door close switch determines whether it is door is open or closed. Next one, we are seeing the outputs. So inputs are user push buttons, water temperature, drum speed, water level sensor, and door close switch. What are the outputs here is drum motor, water heater, water pump, water walls, user display, door lid. So drum motor, so depending once the motor wants to start, the control is the action on button so that the motor will be initiated and will start agitating. Next one, water heater. Whether, depending upon the temperature sensor, whether the heater switch should be on or off, it will be determined by the microcontroller and it will be switching on the heater or it will be switching off the heater through the microcontroller. Next one, water pump. So the water pump is nothing but it will be actually pumping the water from the drum to the outlet. So it will be releasing the water from the drum washing machine to the outlet. Next one, water walls. So once we are filling the drum, the water walls should be closed. That is water fill means closed automatically. And then during the draining phases, the water walls should be drained. Open for draining the water. User display will be displaying whether the wash completed, door is released or not, everything will be determined. So whether we have to release the door while we are filling the water to the tub, we have to close the door and once we are going for spinning, we have to release the door and then we have to once completed, washing completed, the door. The inputs are all user buttons that only I had given, I had already explained. We will repeat once again. There are various buttons used for interaction with the user. So, water temperature will be the sensor which senses the temperature of the water and gives the temperature as an input to the controller. Drum speed will be determined what is the speed of the drum that will be measured and it will be given to the microcontroller. Water level sensor, this input gives current level of the sensor, whether it is lower threshold or upper threshold. Door close switch senses whether the door is closed or not. So the outputs are drum motor. So it is connected with the washing machine drum and it is used for rotating the drum. So once you are switching on, it should be rotating forward, backward or reverse and forward. Next one, water heater. So this is actually, as I told already, it will be sensing the temperature of the water and the temperature sensor senses and it is given as the input. So depending upon our temperature level, depending upon the dirt, we have to increase the switch on the heater or switch off the heater. Next one is the water pump, which will be used to control the water outlet through the outlet, send out through the outlet. So next one, water walls. This signal is used to open or close the water valve of the washing machine. Use the display indicate what is the status current active Going, whether it is washing or rinsing or it is going to be spinning. Door release it is the signal which will be used for cleaning the door for washing. So this is a data flow diagram. Here we are having a start. Here once the start selected, select wash program. So the user will be selecting what type of wash program will be there. Then the reservoir road will be closed. 
So after that, once the cloth is loaded to the washing machine, it will be filling the machine with water. So once the machine will fill the water to a particular threshold, washing starts. So washing started means the wash delicates, it will be whether it is a, a very soft material like wooden cloths or anything, or it may be a tough material, it will be determined here. So if it is a delicate material, we have to do spin with the half spin. And if it is a normal one or any tap there, you can spin it at a full speed. So we are, once the speed, everything washing over, we are just empty the reservoir, then we are going for rinsing, rinsing operation. So once again, it will be filling the water and it will be rinsing. And once rinse completed, it will be empty the reservoir. So drying cycle will be the next one. Again, we are going for low spin or high spin. So once the dry operate, dry, drain operation spinning over, it will be indicated through the buzzer, sound or buzzer. So it means that wash completed. So this is the data flow diagram of a washing machine. So to start it, it will be whenever we are starting, the door should be actually closed. So if the door is closed, then only it will be starting all this procedure. So request, if it is not closed, it will be going for request closer and then it will be, we are closing the door. Operation. So first one will be closing the door, then filling the water, then it will be doing the washing, and then it will be doing the rinsing, then it will be drying, and once drying over, it will be giving that the uh, beep sound saying that washing washing over. So next one we will see the simplified bra diagram of a washing machine. So in this. We are having actually a washing machine controller, which is nothing but a microcontroller. It is also called as we can say that embedded system is nothing but it will be doing very much a specific task. For example, here we are having a washing machine display unit here where we can see the display. Next one, valve control unit. So it is used for opening or closing the valves, mostly the water valve and the draining valve. Next, we are having a motor control unit. What are the three operations we have seen already? Washing, rinsing, drying. So the motor control unit will be used for performing, used for performing these operations. Washing, rinsing, and drying. Same way, we are having different sensors here. Load sensor, which will be managing or finding out what are all the different loads here. Then water sensor, which will be finding out whether it is reached under a particular threshold or above the threshold. Next one, detergent. What amount of detergent that will be determined by this detergent sensor, whether the detergent is there or not. Next one, door sensor. So this den sensor will say that whether this door is open or closed. Next one, balance. Actually, it will be for use for load balance. Okay. The first one, whether it is loaded or not, will be checked. Here, how much load is there inside the machine checked by balance. So trap is nothing but it is an air trap. So it will be actually filter out whether when the water is full, when the tap is full, if this trap will be closing the tap. Same way, whenever we want to do the tap fill, the water wall, drain wall, it should also be closed. So this is done by the trap sensor. It will be identified by the trap sensor. So once again, I will repeat here. So the display unit is nothing but we are going to see the display there. Then we are having motor control unit where we are doing washing, rinsing and drain. So the wall control unit have two walls, water wall and drain wall. So water wall is used for filling the tap and drain wall is used for draining the water from the tap. Sensor unit has different sensor, load sensor, whether the cloth is loaded or not will be sensed by this sensor. A sensor is a device which will be sensing the parameters. So water sensor will be determined whether the tub is filled or not. Detergent sensor will say that whether the soap is there or not. Door sensor say whether the door is closed or open. Balance sensor will be determining how much weight the load is there. So trap sensor is there. So it will be actually used for closing the tap as well as closing the drain. So we'll be having a colorful schematic here, block diagram. In this, we are having actually we are seeing this one, the same display panel, the left side. LCD driver and the drivers are available. So we are having a touch button, buzzer sound, LCD, everything under that. 
and then we are having if you want to actually nowadays everything is controlled by wireless communication so for that connectivity in nowadays washing machine we are having a zigbee technology as well as we are having zigbee technology where we are doing wireless communication here <clears throat> Then we are having a microcontroller unit two, where we are seeing there a triac which will be used for uh, controlling the motor rotation. So as you all study, the firing angle, everything will be determining the speed of the motor, and the power module is there in MCU two will be controlling all this. So here we are having MCU one, where we are having system management, temperature sensors, all the sensors will be placed, and it will be activating the particular operations with the help of this sensor so microcontroller one will be performing as well as the water wall closing door lock pumps heating etc so we are having a shock protection everything logic basic logic everything the major block diagram is there so sensors are used and actuators are performing the action as per the sensor so rf is used for switching on and off wireless communication we can do through mobile also so latest washing machine even we are having to audio control so voice controlled washing machines are available so if you are saying wash the washing if you are saying any all other thing stop or anything whatever voice command will be actually recognizing the voice command and react accordingly so latest innovation voice controlled washing machine and then wireless connected washing machines are available so the working principle as i told already the uses of the microcontroller is the central controller it controls the lcd display and the keyboard so they keep explanation of the diagram just to detail it so the machine can be operated manual or automatic test two washing tub if it is uh, having a dryer and the uh, washing is different and the inlet tub will be actually in the two washing tub one will be the clothes and one tub will be the water will be there. The hot water or cold water. So the water outlets, soap inputs, etc., will be there. Then wash tubs are attached to the motor and gearbox assembly, so that uh, we can just uh, the motor will be agitating operation. That is rotation option. The controller senses the volume of the clothes, type of the dirt, and degree of the dirt, and depending upon the the uh, hard wash or normal wash, soft wash will be determined as we see the clothes. Depending upon this data, the controller decides timings of the water. So this is for fully automatic washing. So it is continued after filling the inner tub with clothes. The machine fills the tub with water. Controller then adds the detergent. The controller then agitates the inner tub. Inner tub where the clothes are there. So after completion of the agitation time, the washer drains the water. The solenoid valve of water is opened. So the controller spins the inlet tub so that the water comes out of the holes to the wall and goes to the outlet. So the controller then refills the tub again. It will be doing the washing operation so that the soap will be properly rinse out properly. So the washing cycle continues till the time estimated by the controller. Development cycle of the washing machine. So whenever we want as an embedded system engineer, whatever product we are developing. So, what are the different development aspects we are going to see? We are going to see that not only for the washing machine, whatever product you are going to develop, that will be determined by this same development cycle. It is not only for a washing machine; it is for all the entire development of an embedded system. First, we have to define the problem. So, what are all the requirements needed? What are all the things needed? Everything should be defined here. What are all requirements? Whatever it may be, it may be a wash control, or it may be automatic, or semi-automatic, or fully automatic, or whatever it may be, manual operated, anything. First, we have to decide what is what is the problem related to this. Next, we are going for economical appraisal. So we cannot somebody from like uh, Ambani and all the higher person they can buy one lakh or two lakhs uh, washing machine, but A normal consumer, how much they can do? So, depending upon your requirement, uh, consumer applications, we have to find out the decide that and how much efficiency they are buying the component and how efficient the cost is there. That will speaks in embedded systems here. So, system analysis. Next, we have the analysis. 
what are all the hardware requirements whenever we are going for any embedded system it consists of hardware and software so we have to see what are all the hardware requirement list out what are all the hardware requirements is and what are all the software development we have to do the hardware so next one uh, we are uh, first we have to find out or we have to write the algorithm then we have to develop the software so once we completed everything human may make mistake so we are seeing the proving of system and error correction we are checking for errors whether it is working or not so actually we should go for a prototype model not even before producing the one lakh product we should start with the initial one product the prototype model and we should check whether it is working properly or not because while we are going for any production mass production only it is so we have to check whether there is any error or not because human error will be naturally detected so while we are doing anything whatever modification rectification after do that we should do that one and after that we should go for final of the product so development cycle here the problem definition in the and repeat once again so here in this case the development first we have to define the definition for a washing machine what the washing machine do and then what are all the various requirements as i discussed earlier and what is the problem there everything we should understand first that is the problem definition next what we are going for is economical appraisal so depending upon your thing we have to decide what are all the cost effective one so whether it is economically met or not so depending upon the application we have to select what are all the components needed what are all the different so we are having a for example cell phone with 900 rupees also but cell phone with 1 lakh also nowadays available so depending upon our requirement and the capacity it will be moving faster we are going to decide the cost next one is the system analysis so system analysis already we discussed what are all the hardware requirement and software requirement so the software and the hardware development is the next step so once identification of what what are all the software needed what are all the hardware needed next step is to develop software and then we have to develop hardware so mostly in embedded system we will be using the proteus software which will be actually doing a prototype model so there are more prototyping software first we will be doing the prototype model and then we will be developing a hardware model after that once completed everything we have to debug any errors and the bugs will be actually cleared once the bug is there clear then we have to go for final product develop uh, product delivery so all the errors are rectified and we have to create final product and for the manual final document so this is the actual prop development cycle of a washing machine so first define a problem and then we should go for an economical appraisal then we have to see the system analysis whether it is a software or hardware then we should go for proving of system error correction then we should go for final documentation so this is the development cycle not only for the washing machine it is for entire embedded system development so with this we are completing the washing machine case study of the washing machine so what all we had studied is actually case study nothing but what are all the inner thing whatever component we are taking we should first find out what are all there inside that and what is the things we are going to develop and what things will be useful for your community community so once you want to develop any embedded system product you have to go for undergone all the cycles which i have told development cycle then we have to go for software prototype model then we should do the final product one so next we will be seeing all the handheld devices so you know n number of handheld devices are there what do you mean by handheld devices handheld devices is nothing but we are whatever we are using the hands so we are having actually but it should have the components like embedded system components sensors actuators memory processor and minimum input and then we have a uh, display small led display small lcd display small keyboard So actually, the embedded systems. While we are going for an embedded system design, it is really a challenging task that the miniature can be there, 
as well as it will be less cost. So as you will usually a greeting cards will be buying for less cost rather than you won't buy for a one lakh rupees. So select an embedded system depending upon the embedded system you have to select the controller all the components inside there. So if it is for military application or any other satellite application even a one crore product you won't bother about that but if you are going for a, a latest one any I think retail one, meaning a products, consumer based product, we have to go for a cost effective consumer based product. So, we are having a listed few, all are having that one in your hands now mobile phones, then personal data assistant, pagers, then we are having a digital thermometer, then BP checking machine, sugar checking machine. So, it is actually we are having a retail sugar checking machine, then even with the sweat, now also I am having sweat here. So even with the sweat also we can develop a sugar which may be a non-invasive devices. So we no need to prickle your hand and take your blood and we have no need to do the checking. So nowadays we are having through sweating so many non-invasive methods are there for checking your sugar. So now we are having always all are having nowadays uh, some 2000 to 3000 on watch which will be saying your pulse rate everything. So how much uh, energy is burnt everything will be the smart watches. So we are having a digital thermometer now in during this COVID-19 period all are checking using the digital thermometer only. Wherever we are going all will be like gunshot they are having one thermometer which will be saying that what is the temperature of that without touching the so it will be saying whether the temperature is uh, how much it is. These are all the uh, advancement of the thanks to the embedded system for doing all these things. So nowadays all are checking the Everything now latest, if you are going to the doctor also, they are not using previously, they used to put their thermometer under the tongue and they will be testing the temperature of the patient. Now, they will be just doing one gunshot and they are finding out the temperature of the patients here. So, pages, it is actually outdated. Anyhow, I just give an example here. Nowadays, they are not using the pages. Then, uh, MP3 players. It is like actually a, a matchbox size MP3 players where we are uh, having one forward button, backward button, which can be stored in a six hours music. So six hours music can be downloaded there and it can be played through the 100 rupees MB3 player. Next, we are having a portable video game. So nowadays, nobody is using video game. All are using your video game by downloading the app and we are using it in the mobile itself. So there are so many different video games are available. But any uh, portable video game is also an handheld device. So smart watches already I had discussed and RFID scanner. So if you are buying any products, it will be actually uh, you are having a scanner ID there. So any products if you are buying there, it will be actually scanning and the code, uh, the data code while well, through this code, it will be entering the price of them. So these are all the advancement here. Like we can say that so any number of applications like conductor issue ticket, all are embedded system. Even though you are aware, not, aware or not, all are actually participating in this embedded system. Actually, embedded system is very much actually useful for that. So here, we are having a RFID scanner and then BP sugar checking machine, audio players. Audio players, as I told already, we are having a MP3 players, packet size players, and then CD players, everything. Okay, then digital camera, which have the LCD display there itself with the digital camera. Then we are having a tab, tablet, which is actually nowadays we are not using now. Mostly the kids will be using the tabs. And then we are having modems, which will be used for modulation and demodulation. We are having audio product, video product, etc. So, so many handheld devices are there. So, all are mostly familiar with this. Anyhow, I'll save only one or two. So, next one, we are having a one handheld device, which is actually in our day to day life we are using. So, room temperature controller digital thermostat. So, what will be the input will be the temperature. So, the temperature cannot be used by the processor here. So, the temperature will be actually given to your analog to digital converter. <clears throat> so, that actually thermostat will be converting the temperature to the analog signal. So, the analog signal cannot be processed by the processor. So, what we are doing here is the analog signal will be converted digital with the help of the analog to digital converter. So the processor consists of keypad, memory and display. So the memory may be a RAM memory, ROM memory or 
the standard flash number. So we are having here two types of things. So our place we need AC in a cool place like Kodaikanal, Ooty or any other place, Darjeeling or Simla, we will be having depth there. So what will be the sensor doing means whenever we are going there, we are setting a particular temperature there, the temperature will be measured and when it reaches the particular threshold, for example, I need a temperature of 25 degrees centigrade. What I will be doing is the 25 degrees centigrade will be actually whenever it reaches the 25 degrees centigrade, it will switch off the AC. So when it goes beyond above the 26 degree or 27 degree, so it will be what it should be doing switching on the AC. So the this is the room temperature control. So whenever you as, uh, go below 25 degree, then switch on the AC. Above 25 degree, switch off the AC. Okay. Same way heater. If you are setting a 18 degree here, then it will be actually 18 degree or 30 degree here. It will be switching on the heater or switching off the heater. So in, if you are going to room controller means here we all need only. If you are going for any uh, cool climate place, there they will be using a heater. So I have put both heater and AC here. So a processor consists of memory and then uh, keypad as well as display. So as we know already, we are having in the memory, RAM memory, ROM memory and flash memory. So what is the advantage of flash memory in a rig space? One lakh times here. So this is about the room temperature controller using a digital thermostat. So here thermostat is the sensor, temperature sensor. Next, we are going to see a cell phone block diagram. So here we are having actually a three major here. What is that means? We are having a RF phase and then we are having baseband processor, then digital baseband processor. So the baseband will be doing of taking care of all RF transceiving and receiving. So the clock transceiver is nothing but be transmitting as well as receiving the signal. So transmitter will be transmitting the signal from here it will be a voice signal will be converted into analog signal and through RF fiber amplifier it will be transmitted to the antenna. So olden days the antenna will be uh, outside the cell phone. Nowadays we are having the antenna inside itself. In so we cannot be able to see separately. So we are having the SIM card which is nothing but a subscriber ID which will be used for storing our uh, number, everything, all our uh, information all memory also available in the SIM, which you might have studied in communication as well as the wireless communication. So the baseband signal, the RF from take care of transmitting and receiving of the RF signal. That is nothing but your uh, entire world throughout wireless communication carried out by the RF radio. So the baseband processor, it will be actually doing controlling all these transmission and receiving parts. And another processor is there which will be taking care of all the charging part and then keypad part, USB part and then power part as well as we are having an audio codec. The codec will be having uh, consist of earphone, mouthpiece and headset jack. So this will be take care of this application processor and we are having actually a RAM, ROM and uh, SD RAM. It will be actually this block diagram it is uh, mentioned as NOR, NAND and SD ROM. Actually, the memory you can have a RAM ROM and then SD RAM. So usually, whenever you are going and buying a cell phone, what are all the configurations you are asking for? You will be asking for the pixel camera pixel, and then you will be asking for the how much GB your hard disk, and then how much RAM the processing speed you will be asking, and what are all the additional features available? All the things, whether it is with Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and then camera, and then by FM radio, etc. So even a basic mobile nowadays that FM here. So we are having the all these things. Each one they will be separated here. Power management will be taking care of charging. So the battery once it is drained, everything forming that uh, whether it is uh, reaching a particular level or not, uh, charging when when it is going beyond the limit will be saying that uh, uh, not. Uh, you have to charge everything will be taken care of that power management which is controlled by the application processor so all are controlled by a processor which is nothing but a microcontroller or a processor or it may be a 
ASP processor. The processor in the sense here, we are using a microprocessor here. So here, audio product job is to do uh, coding and decoding of the audio signal, okay? So while you are receiving any information through the airport, it will be receiving as an audio signal. And when your audio signal is spoken, convert it to the, uh, the next analog signal and it should be translated. So this will be taken care by the codec. Codec is nothing but coder. So the Wi-Fi is used uh, mostly in everywhere. Nowadays we are using Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi only I am also talking about. So same way here we are having Wi-Fi communication, so which will be uh, very much useful for entire globe will be in our hands, right? So cell phone block diagram, we had seen that memory part is there and then uh, baseband processor is available and we are having RF uh, based application and we are having an analog based processor, digital based processor. So these are all the uh, few devices I had listed, only the digital thermometer as well as the cell phone block diagram. There are n number of devices which you can write whatever you are familiar with right, for handheld device. So I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you for all of you for attending this session. Thanks a lot. Be safe, stay